Good morning everybody, welcome. We've called this talk Exams by E-Assessment Long-Term Movement or Short-Term Reaction and it follows the evolution or otherwise of the role of computerised assessment in some of our course units at Manchester in recent years. Now recent years have been eventful at the University of Manchester, just like everywhere else. They've been eventful in the Department of Mathematics for our teaching to math students and indeed to students in many other departments. We have been using e-assessment for a number of years now and we've seen a gradual evolution onto the use of STACK. You can see starting at around 2008 here with a big breakthrough being when we were able to connect through Blackboard to Stack. It has been up until very recent years used mainly for coursework tests and a lot for students taking our service courses. Let us consider three of the service courses we have course Maths 0B1, with its code here 19801. This is a course given to our foundation year students, students that will be in the first year of one of the departments in our science and engineering faculty the next year. It's one of the calculus and algebra courses in semester one, there is a different calculus and algebra course for maybe some less mathematically proficient foundation year students. We have Maths 1M2, this is in the second semester, given to students in our department of Mechanical, Aerospace and Civil Engineering. And then we have a second year course, Maths 2E1, first semester of the second year. This is a course on Laplace transforms, vector calculus, linear algebra, two students in the department of electrical and electronic engineering. The two topics, Laplace transforms and vector calculus, are given by my co-author, Dr. Chernyavsky, with a further academic carrying out the linear algebra part. So let's cast our minds back to 2019 or earlier. And I've called this an era of blissful ignorance. We didn't know what was to come. Most courses were given in a traditional manner, two lectures and one tutorial per week. There were, of course, various thoughts about, well, should we be doing it this way? Can we be doing things in other ways? Already on the coursework, yes, a fair number of course units were using Stack or Blackboard or possibly something else for the coursework, the in-semester coursework, but exams were carried out in traditional format. So that's what we could consider to be the base that we're working from. For example, in 2019, with the semester two course happening in the early part of 2019, yes, we had two stack assignments. Those were done in a manner that would found worked quite well. Students could have a practice quiz, which they could do an unlimited number of times and they would have a single go at an assessment quiz. Now, my nomenclature of practice and assessment I'm not quite happy with. I've consulted about students on better terminology there, but the best practice counts as did the single assessment. Those were carried out at times of the student's choosing within a particular window. The assessment version contained mainly 
the same question stems as the as the practice but with different randomizations there but from about 2016 onwards yes we did put in a couple of new questions 19801 that's 0b1 to foundation year we had the diagnostic follow-up which used stack the diagnostic exercise at the beginning of the semester told us were there particular topics that particular students needed to do some more work on and we were able to use stack to carry out the assessment part of the individualized program of work that we allocated everybody but for the remaining ones yes we carried out written quizzes at the ends of certain of the tutorials during the semester so this was previously prior to 2020 it was a mixture of stack and traditional type coursework in our course to second year electrical engineers yes we have for some time carried out two stack assignments for those students so that's where we started from but as 2020 progressed it became clear that yes everything would have to change march to june 2020 quick move online no in-person events i wouldn't quite go as far as to say make it up as you're going along but certainly we did have to react quickly and to produce new forms of teaching for the students on really quite short timescales. As far as 19662 was concerned, which was running at that point, coursework one could run as normal, and indeed coursework two ran as normal at a time where everything else was any anything but normal. So I've described coursework two there as an island of normality. And then when it came to exams that particular summer, June 2020, at Manchester, exams were cancelled. And they were replaced by formative exercises. We didn't have large numbers of students taking up those formative exercises. And those were carried out using traditional written means. If March to June 2020 could be considered make it up as you're going along then the academic year 2020 to 21 certainly could not things were planned to a considerable level of detail videos and review sessions replaced the traditional lectures all students were taught online there had been hopes of having some classes on campus but for various reasons that did not happen let's look at coursework for the two semester one courses during the autumn of 2020 for 2e1 second year electricals two pieces of coursework taking place online as previously as far as maths 0b1 was concerned Diagnostic follow-up, yes, that was able to continue as normal, but the other tests, of course, they couldn't be carried out in the way they'd been carried out in previous years, and we moved them online using stack. In all cases, reasonable time windows, practice and assessment versions, using randomised coefficients, as indeed we'd always done. But simply moving things online didn't simply mean doing them without changes. Let's have a look at a couple of questions from 0B1. Here we see one particular question from 2019. The students were given an expression to put into partial fractions form. They wrote their working and their answer in the box. Now, a question like this was relatively easy to put into stack form. We probably already had a particular stack question which would do the job here. But let's have a look at another question here from 2019 
we had asked the students to plot a particular graph. So we're coming to the conclusion that yes, there are some questions which would involve the students actually showing their working or showing a graph. So as a result of that, there were a few questions which used Stack but involved uploading a file for later human marking. So here we see an example of a question from 2020. Plot a rough sketch showing the function below and its derivative. So what the student needs to produce is a graph and while I'm sure that there are ways of getting the students to input what is subsequently turned into a graph in Stack, that's not the approach that we took here. We asked them to upload a file and then of course after the, the quiz it would be human marked but the student would see the solution for their question. Each student got a different randomised curve with, of course, a different appropriate derivative here. They could see their curve and their derivative along with, yes, what's some slightly generic comments at the bottom here. But the markers could also see their curve and the derivative that they should have had and compare it with what they had produced. So it did involve some human marking, but it could be done in, in a way that it was all done through stack, recorded through stack, and was not excessively time consuming. The beginning of 2021 took us into exam season, and the two first semester courses took slightly different approaches here. Now, at last year's conference, Igor gave a talk about his fully automated exam, including one question with a scan solution, one question with text, that the students would get all of their own coefficients there, would carry this one out in their own locations at a specific time. Again, using stack, okay, we did have to use staggered starts for stack. Some of the setup at Manchester means that the e-learning team were not confident about having more than about 100 starts within a five-minute period. So we did have some staggering going on there, but this seemed to work well. The foundation year exam, it was actually a hybrid. On the same day, we had a one-hour stack paper and a one hour written, scanned and uploaded paper. So we had those on the same day. Different approaches, yes, there were different approaches across the various papers there. Part of it was that, yes, it's excellent to be using e-assessment, but sometimes, yes, we would like to see the working there. And while not without its uh, detractions, the scanned and uploaded paper allows students to do just that. One question that was on the 0B1 stack paper was as here. Students are asked for an even function satisfying a couple of different conditions here. We see this particular student has put something in involving trig and of course has been marked correct, although the stored answer that the computer had was, of course, one of many other functions that satisfy the conditions there. So we were able to use the flexibility of stack there. We found that the exam season worked well with those particular papers. Progressing further through 2021 and our second semester course to the mechanical, aerospace and civil engineers, the coursework went ahead as it had done recently, a couple of stack assignments. The exam, however, this was different from, say, the 2019 exam. It consisted of, well, it had always been a two-hour exam. This year it was split into a one-hour written and scanned paper and a one-hour stack paper on the same day. 
and this seemed to work well. There were a few instances while marking the written part that I had my suspicions about the independence of certain answers that I'd seen from different students, but I felt there was nothing that I could take further forward there, nothing that seemed to affect the same paper on more than one question, for example. And so to academic year 2021 to 22. The university aspired to be able to carry out in-person teaching again, and it was a case of the various new developments that we'd created over the last couple of years to be able to take them into the classroom. In-person teaching was indeed carried out, that we only lost a couple of days towards the end of December with Omicron coming in, but the rest of the academic year could be carried out with classes in person. One interesting development, though, is that some students in some departments were given the option of studying remotely so that we had dual delivery of various classes. This affected the semester one teaching, but the semester one January exams, together with all of the semester two activities, all students were expected to be on campus for these. So the coursework in autumn of 2021 went fairly similarly with appropriate incremental developments to that which happened in autumn of 2020. That would be the case for both the foundation year and electrical engineering of our courses that we're following here. And when it came to the exam, well, 29681, second year electrical engineering, again, it was a case of this was a fully electronic exam paper run using stack. The difference from the previous year was this one was also now invigilated within computer cluster. The foundation year paper was a hybrid exam in that there were two different components. Early in the day, the students would take a one hour written invigilated paper. So this was returning to the tradition there, but for one hour rather than two. And then they had in the afternoon a one hour stack assignment. This could be done in locations of their choice. We did make sure that you can see between 10.45 and 2 p.m. if they did need to travel some distance, for example, going home on a commuter distance, then they were able to do that. I suppose it's fair to say that this year, the 2E1 paper proved a little bit unpopular with students. Somehow it seemed that although the marks were not particularly low, some of the students took badly to invigilated conditions. Whether this was invigilation in a cluster or whether it was simply a return to invigilation, that remains to be seen there. But we do look at the possibility of carrying out invigilation for at least one of the pieces of coursework for autumn of 2022. Spring of 2022 saw coursework for Maths 1M2, couple of stack assignments as previously. The setup of this is fairly routine by this point. But the exam for that course, yes, that was a new departure again, taking advantage of the facilities involved in things being on campus. So this was a hybrid paper, but two components invigilated and examined together. So during a two hour exam, the students would take a stack assignment designed to last one hour and a written paper designed to last one hour. All the times that I mention, you know, if for students with extra time, yes, they get the extra time. So it was the two different types of paper being carried out at the same time. Now, while at this 
rest relatively early stage, it does seem to have given acceptable results. One very noticeable thing was actually the working for the stack paper. Because, of course, the students were carrying out the two different types of paper at the same time, it would be possible that parts of the working between the two could get mixed up. However, the students did seem remarkably disciplined in terms of putting the working for the stack questions in one book and the working for the written questions in a different book, with, of course, one being marked and the other one not being marked but retained just in case there are any issues of students not segregating between the two books. But looking at the working for the stack paper, it seems to be written to the same level of detail as for the written paper. So this does raise some interesting questions about just how the students do set their work out there. Perhaps we could say it's excellent that they're setting it out to the same standard that they would do so when they're presenting the work to others as is what happens with a written paper, rather than just scrolling something down that is meaningful to them and will be meaningful to them in an hour or two in case they want to look at it again. So that raises a very interesting point. But this, of course, takes us up to the present day. We can see some more course units where automated assessment has happened in recent exams but which may or may not be moving back to more traditional assessment. One, co piece, one course where a reasonable amount of use has been made of stack recently, but which may revert to traditional form. A course to materials where Blackboard has been used and may continue to be used. A maths course on algebraic structures. This had had exams where students had written and scanned material. It had been the case that work about stating or stating definitions or theorems had not been included. It's not quite clear what the form would be for 2023 yet. Similarly, there's one on differentiable manifolds where the scanned system has been used and where the lecturer is keen that it does go forward to the future in this form. So it does seem that yes, some courses, some papers may move back to more traditional forms of assessment. And reasons for this vary. In some cases, there are what we could call knock-on issues from malpractice on uninvigilated take-home written exams. We probably would not call this e-assessment for the purposes of this meeting, but somehow, it does seem, if this kind of thing happens, it tends to, tends to put a black mark on anything which is e-learning. Sometimes it can be difficult when writing questions to write in such a way that all sensible answers worthy of some credit will actually be picked up in a potential response tree or via multiple choice. Of course, the subject matter is important. For some subjects, it really is very important to ask about bookwork or statements theorems. And sometimes it's simply a case of colleagues find it easier to work on paper than on screen or have various other attachments to traditional means of assessment. So we've seen that many different modes of assessment have been used of late. I believe some of those modes enhance the assessment activities that we're doing and many courses will continue to use such modes. But we do see, and we've seen the reasons, why some courses are likely in their assessment to return to more traditional 
modes of assessment. So Igor and I would like to thank various colleagues who have also contributed data for this. Thank you.